external oblique muscle is attached on the ribs, shafts of the rib and it moves forward and medially and then downward. So this is the direction of this muscle. But then because this muscle is very large muscle, external oblique muscle on both sides, it is the external most muscle of the anterior abdominal wall. It makes a very broad, yes, it makes a very broad aponeurosis. That aponeurosis is what? It's, it's a flattened tendon. Let's suppose if external oblique muscle was not a sheet, it muscle is also a broad sheet, right? Which is moving from, it has about from eight slips. It is attached with the lower eight ribs. Lower eight ribs. Upper four slips are interdigitating with serratus anterior. Lower eight slips are interdigitating with latissimus dorsi. Very good. And this muscle moves downward anteriorly and medially and forward and then it converts into very large aponeurosis. Right? Now, from this aponeurosis, many things are derived. But right now, I will just concentrate on inguinal ligament, right? Actually, external oblique aponeurosis start attaching from Ziphi sternum, then linea alba, then pubic crest, even pubic symphysis some fiber, then pubic crest, then pubic tubercle, pubic crest, right? Then pubic tubercle, right? Then, where it will go? This tendon, the broad tendon which is coming down. Now, now you imagine on my body that this is coming here, right? It will get attached at the Ziphi sternum, linea alba. It is atta attaching, 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 attaching. Then it will attach medial most, symphysis pubis, then pubic crest, right? This is pubic crest. This is symphysis pubic. And this is pubic tubercle right then from pubic tubercle it is freely hanging this is a free lower end of external oblique aponeurosis freely hanging dangling right free hanging this is the part of aponeurosis of external oblique we can say inferior free end this which is medially attached with pubic tubercle and laterally it is attached with anterior superior iliac spine right so it start from where it start from ziphi sternum linea alba symphysis pubic then pubic crest then tubercle then free hanging right making inguinal ligament and then what is it anterior superior iliac spine now this part of X, first of all, make the very basic concept. This part of external oblique aponeurosis, which is the inferior part of the free hanging a part of the aponeurosis, connected medially on the pubic tubercle and laterally connected with the anterior spinal spine. This part is called inguinal ligament but actually it is not inguinal ligament actually it is aponeurosis so what is the real nature of inguinal ligament the real 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 nature of inguinal ligament is that inguinal ligament is inferior most one part of external oblique aponeurosis which is free on medial end it is attached with pubic tubercle, laterally it is attached with anterior superior iliac spine. Is that right? Yes. Now, listen carefully. But is there any difference between, between its grandmother, grandmother which is giving birth to this, the mother ligament, the grandmother external oblique aponeurosis, is there difference between regular aponeurosis and inguinal ligament which is also part of the 
aponeurosis and derived from the aponeurosis, right? Yes, there is a difference. And how this difference is created? What really happens that, you know, if you believe in evolution, that when human beings move during evolutionary process and became bipedal animals, they took off their four legs off the ground. It was too good, you know, in evolution. Women could hold baby very well and men could got their four legs free and they started calling them upper limbs and uh, they can do many things with them. They are free to do so many things. Now, when we take erect posture as human beings, pressure from the abdomen was too much to go down. Abdominal viscera, whenever you cough or whenever you are sneezing or whenever you are even laughing, right? Anything which increase intra-abdominal pressure, there is a pressure for contents of abdomen to go down and out. This pressure was coming to the lower most part of this mother ligament. Or you can say this pressure is chronically coming over what? What is this? Coming, coming on the inferior most part of the external oblique aponeurosis. And due to this chronic dynamic pressures, this inferior edge responded. How it responded? It became reinforced. It became strong. Even to in increase its strength to support the abdominal structures and withstand the dynamic pressures in the abdominal cavity, right? It for what did it do? It folded on itself backward. For example, if this was ligament, let's suppose this is the ligament coming down, aponeurosis coming down. This is my aponeurosis coming down. I'm making a cut here, right? If I'm making a cut here, aponeurosis is coming down and it comes down, 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 and this is the lower end. First of all, it will become thick. Lower end will become thick. thick. Number two, it will fold on itself. Right? Now, folding can be of two types. For example, if you talk about folding at this point, the lateral point, the here, if we see from the side, this become thick and then fold it like this. It become almost round. But as you move medially, this folding, I must say, can you give me a pencil? Yes. This is, you can say, point, they are folded. I'm making an inguinal ligament, nothing else. This side. So this was originally, what is this? Aponeurosis coming down. Then it reinforced, became thickened, and then it folded on itself, and added special strength to itself, right? And this part now, this component of what is this? Aponeurosis. This is called an inguinal ligament. This is a cut section. Right? Now, but if you move as it moves more medial and downward beautifully, I think if you are a child, you can imagine if you have a child, heart of a child, how you can slide on it. Right? So, actually, it, its medial end convert into a slider. And I will tell you which babies are moving through that. Of course, it has motherly nature. I call it mother ligament. Inguinal ligament is a mother, mother ligament. ligament. What really happens on medial end when, when it comes, its folding become different. At this point, three to four centimeter, its folding become different. That, what is this? Inguinal ligament coming down 
and it thickens right but its fold opens its fold opens so if you look at like this it will become like a slide happy baby here so we can say from here it is moving like this rounded but as it comes medially it become like this a slide this is called a groove in its upper part on the medial side so what we can say its lateral side two ends are folded on each other right but they don't make a groove they are really hugging each other you know it's very good it releases oxytocin you should also practice hugging with the appropriate people remember if you hug someone you appropriate person oxytocin will be released but if you hug someone who doesn't like you believe me you will not have oxytocin you might have adrenaline even adrenaline rush and if you are more forced to do such hugging every day for example uh, mother in law and the daughter in law they have to hug every day each other the moment they hug each other lot of adrenaline comes into both bodies and if they hug each other every day for many months or years then chronic stress will induce even high cortisol also so hugging is not always good 